Well, I see a lot of boats out here, but I don't see any bait at all. I almost feel like maybe I should go fish somewhere else. Kind of alarmed at how quickly the striped bass slowed down. They're kind of already moving into their winter habitats, so I don't know if the season's coming to a close early, but I'm noticing the water's dropping pretty quick. So I switched it up, and when the water is getting colder, it actually gets really clear in the sound, and on this day, there was probably eight to 10 feet of clarity. So I took advantage of that and brought out the underwater rig, went and got some green crabs from the bait shop, and built out a little, little rig with some paper clips and green crabs and kind of created a buffet. And I really wanted to see the feeding habits of these uh, tatog and uh, kind of check the difference between two different locations that I fish at pretty frequently. The bottom contours are completely different from each other at these two spots. They're pretty far away from each other as well. And I thought it'd be cool to compare the two. And just straight off the bat, I would say that one of the biggest takeaways and something that I've always kind of known is when it's not busy with the Tatog at a certain spot, just move, just go somewhere else. Like if you're not getting tons of bites, just go somewhere else. They might not be feeding, they might not be there. But there is some assurance in this footage. Like if you look at this first spot, this is a very bouldery area. There's much larger boulders, kind of sandier bottom. And you can see there's tons of bergal. There's tog here, but it's not quite as active. And the tog are being pretty shy as well. And I will say in between this of switching the locations, the tide did turn it switched to incoming and there was a lot more current. And you're going to see at the second location that much different bottom you know it's like um all clams and mussel beds and more of like a seabed area and less bouldery it's more just like spread out shellfish so i will say that i'm not sure if current had something to do with the difference between these two filming areas and why the second one was busy but i will say the major difference is the first location i was not anchored it's a little unsafe to anchor there and you can see that if the rig is not completely still these fish are very hesitant so when you're dropping your jig down being anchored is really important i mean you can catch them without an anchor drifting but you really got to build the bite and you're going to see the huge difference between the two like locations like you can see at this second location the second that i was anchored up and chumming the area and continually feeding these tog more and more just keep coming like one after the the bite just builds more and more and gets crazier and crazier so i think there's something to be said about that like anchoring is really important or spot locking when you're doing tog fishing and also keeping your jig really still the tog will be hesitant to hit your jig if it's moving around and drifting it doesn't mean you're not going to get them but I, I did, you know, really notice the difference between the behavior and the fish. You know, I'm, I think that that was really it. And also, from up above, I was fishing at the same time, catching these fish. You know, I got a, a keeper this day. There we go. That's a nice fish. That's what we're looking for. Come on. Oh, keeper, 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 keeper. Come on, Bob, don't mess this up. Keeper, we got one. Yes! So my second keeper of the year. Oh my gosh, yes! Keep him in the water as long as possible. Whoa! Wow, exactly 16 and a half. The one thing I noticed is switching to my lighter rod really made a huge difference. I started with a heavier jig. I was using like a one ounce jig to start and I was not getting as many bites. And the second that I switched up to a lighter fast action rod and I think I was on three eighth ounce jig or half ounce, like a little bit of a lighter jig and smaller profile. I started catching way more fish and also like 
So I don't know if it's the sensitivity of the rod that the fish are feeling on their end that they are suspicious of it. And with the fast action tip, you know, they just, they just don't feel it as much. And the jig is more floating. So I would say like dialing in the weight of your jig is pretty clutch as well. I'm not sure, you know, this, this is just, we're using, you know, tog jigs for this test. I didn't use any rigs, you know, with sinkers. And, um, so maybe that doesn't matter as much for a rig, but yeah, I just thought this was a cool video, something different. And yeah, I got a keeper, ended up making some tog bites with it and, uh, with some turtle chips and it was, yeah, it was a good day. So I hope you enjoy this footage and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. They picked me dry, Captain. So that means this footage is gonna be sick.